You're here because you're working on a drivability complaint and you've been unable to figure out the root cause of the problem. Fuel quality test equipment is not that expensive and fuel quality testing should be added to all your diagnostic steps. We're going to test for reed vapor pressure, water contamination, and ex excessive alcohol in the fuel. Reed vapor pressure tells us how fast the fuel will vaporize. In some states, their summer and winter class fuels using the wrong class of fuel may cause a drivability problem. Your equipment may look different, it may be different, but they all do the same thing. Remove the fuel from the vehicle. Make sure you get it out of the fuel tank. Do not remove hot fuel from the fuel rail. This testing is temperature sensitive and you don't want to use hot fuel to start with. Place the correct amount of fuel in the tester, thread the gauge onto the tester, pour hot water into the cup, place the test unit and the thermometer in the hot water, and at the correct testing temperature, read the gauge. Compare the reading to the RVP chart. A measured 9.0 PSI means that the fuel is summer grade fuel and it's not intended for winter use. In this example we measured 15 PSI. When we compare this reading to the RVP chart, it says that at 15 PSI it should not be used above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a winter grade fuel. Readings this low, and you can see it's very low on the gauge, may cause an extended crank or no start condition. Fuel can get old and not reach the minimum RVP class of 9.0. We've all experienced the lawnmower that wouldn't start and then when we got new fuel it started right up. Your customer's fuel can get old. If the fuel has the wrong RVP, drain and flush the fuel tank, replace with the correct fuel. You may want to explain to your customer they need to be selective where they purchase their fuel. Testing for water in the fuel requires special equipment also. It's just a cable. It's best to test the fuel in the fuel tank and not remove the fuel from the fuel tank. Coat the tip of the cable with AquaCheck. Place the coated cable tip into the fuel tank and move it around. The AquaCheck will turn purple if there's water in the fuel tank. If there's water present, drain and flush the fuel tank, replace it with good fuel. Explain to the customer once again, they may want to be selective where they purchase their fuel. To test for excessive alcohol in the fuel, a syringe works the best. If you don't have a syringe, make sure you use a container that you can cover. Mix 3 cc's of water and 9 cc's of fuel in the syringe. Shake it vigorously for a minute. After shaking it, let the syringe stand for one minute. If alcohol is present, it will separate from the fuel and dissolve with the water and settle at the bottom. This is very difficult to see in this slide, so we added dye to the water so that it could be seen clearly. In this example, there's a little over 10% alcohol in the fuel. And normal amounts of alcohol are MBE and MTBE shouldn't be more than 15%. Methanol shouldn't be over 5%. Excessive amounts of alcohol may cause drivability problems. Now don't forget, there are flex fuel vehicles. Their designation is FFV. And they will run on 85% maximum alcohol. That's right, up to 85%. These vehicles have a fuel sensor to detect the concentration of alcohol. Vehicles without the sensors will experience drivability problems. If there's excessive amounts of alcohol in the fuel, drain and flush the fuel tank, replace with good fuel, and once again tell the customer he needs to be more selective where he buys his fuel. 